Freddy reassured me the weapons were only meant for show, nothing more. One of his crew was high behind something and lost his sense and had fired on the man. This was forbidden. He told me, you did good. Some kind of wonderful to hear you done good from the lips of a psychopath. I'm far from comfort, comforted. I can see the scene in my head. Doesn't look so hot to me. We sure as hell weren't saving lives. I purposefully drove like a maniac long after driving like a maniac was needed. Everyone in the van stopped what they were doing except crashing into the walls and falling into one another. They started to curse me out in uneven, agitated tones, but Freddy shushed them all. He played that calming card on me, deconstructed my temper, but only after scolding me loud enough so everyone could hear. I began to obey the laws of physics and traffic and Freddy. He promised me the guy would live anyway, and true to his word, the guy lived. I saw it on the news the very next day. Chapter 17 So began my life of crime. Goodbye Dunkin' Donuts. Hello assholes and donut holes alike. Dudes with rocks for brains. Other petty criminals with rocks and pipes, which quickly turns brains to porridge. Welcome to the eternal hustle on the streets. Welcome to separating people from their cell phones permanently. Welcome to trying not to hurt anybody. But hell, if they get in the way, what are we to do? They got in the way, and that's on them. Fierce. Welcome to a world of mostly hard types who could care less. One in five, a sociopath. Usually the guys, but not always. Watch out, honey, because the chicks who have not a feeling in their heart for her soul can break out in a spree of some of the worst crimes you've never seen. Sociopathy on the streets looks like a stable full of teenage escorts to bank off over here while dabbling in identity theft rings over there. Then they got guns for hire in case someone pisses them off or tries to move in on their action. Or someone gets shot or raped or just plain disappears. <laughs>